Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to the videos of the paid requests for Bronson. Uh, thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Links are in the info box over there or over there wherever it's at nowadays. But Wild Hogs is a 2007 comedy starring Tim Allen, John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, William H. Macy, Yosef Rigoliota in it. Peter Fonda has a small bit at the end of the film. Uh, Steven Tobolowski, Ned Ryerson from Groundhog Day, he's in the film. Uh, John C. McGinley, who was in Any Given Sunday, and Nothing to Lose, and I think Highlander 2, on Deadly Ground. I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff. He, he's in a bit part. The reason I'm pausing is... I like the film for what it is. It's goofy. It's silly. It still amazes me how big of a hit this was. People forget this film made like $168 billion in the U.S. Think about that. This film made almost $200 million in the U.S. alone. And that's still crazy to me. Again, even as a guy that don't mind the film, I'm like, wow. I, I forgot... I knew this was a hit. I forgot how big of a hit it was. And I am surprised there was never a sequel. I think they tried for a few years and they gave up. Which good for them. They didn't just throw out a sequel. Although to be fair, I'm sure all four would have gotten a much bigger paycheck. So it would have been a much bigger budget. And then they probably would not have made nearly as much money. I'm sure that was a factor as well. Now, it's directed by Walt Becker, who did Van Wilder with Ryan Reynolds, Old Dogs with John Travolta and Robin Williams, and 2021 did a Clifford movie. So, an actual Clifford movie, not the Martin Short, you know, I'm a little, I'm 40 years old, but I'm a, playing a little kid. No, the, the big red dog Clifford. Now, the plot is these four guys are friends, and you know they're, we show the aspects of their life, and things aren't going the best. Now, I do wish in the beginning we had more of them just interacting and being friends, like how they work with each other, how they interact with each other. It's more if we see them separately than we see them riding a motorcycle together, and then by the time we see them together, we're into the plot of the film. It's like, no, let's see some room to breathe of them. I think it would have been nice to see them bonding, having fun, laughing, joking with each other. And then you see in their separate lives, you know, eh. then go back to, yeah, yo, we're having fun with these guys. And like a mont, if not a montage, but like the show time span of a year two years or whatever going back and forth to really get a sense of these four as friends and how they interact with each other before the plot happens surprisingly enough i think uh the first grown-ups did that decently where you kind of like before the, like before the plot happens or even within the plot you see them kind of interacting just goofing on each other making fun of each other giving each other hard times so you get a sense of them as friends and that's one of the things I do like about the first grown ups film I think a little bit of that could have been at the beginning but I think part of the appeal for me why I do like it I don't love it I wouldn't give this at a 5 or 4 out of 5 star it's at least a 3 out of 5 at least because I like the cast I like the 4 leads I think they're good actors and you know it's they're being silly and goofy, and it's like, okay, I like these guys, and it's like, see them being silly and goofy. It's an interesting mix of actors put together. That went a bit of a way for me. Tim Allen, he's a dentist, and the problem with him is that his son seems like doesn't respect him. Because he offers, hey, let's play some hoops. He says no, but then someone else says yes. Because they're cooler. And Tim Allen kind of is dejected because of that. I'd be like, your kid sucks. <laughs> That'd be my opinion. 
John Travolta, he had this rich place with this hot girlfriend, but she left him, and he he's out of money. He's bankrupt, so he doesn't know what to do next. Martin Lawrence, he wants to be a writer, but he hasn't read much of anything. He had, he's henpecked. His wife controls him and wears the pants in the family. Her mom is staying with them, and she tosses crap to Martin. Which I did like his line. Oh, in your day? Is that when the men had pyramids to build? Which I know may not be the best joke, but the way Martin said it, it did get a chuckle out of me. I liked his energy in that. Energy in that. So he's forced to go back to being a plumber and clean up crap out of the toilet. And then William H. Macy, he's the nerdy guy who is awkward around women. So he's at like an internet cafe thing and... He tries to say something alternative, but the computer mistakes it for alternative sex, and so he can't shut it off. So, instead of powering it down, like most people would do, he spills coffee or whatever on the thing and breaking his computer. I'm like, there is a button you could just press and it would power the whole thing down, but I guess, you know, it, that wouldn't be, that'd be less funny. <laughs> So they have the little things going on, but at the same time, they like to hang out riding motorcycles together. Now, it would have been nice to know how that came about. Uh, how the whole motorcycle thing came about. What made them want to ride motorcycles? What made them want to be part of Wild Hogs? But you never really get much of that. And that's, I think, while I do like the film, at times it goes for cheaper laughs that really aren't the best. And it doesn't have much of a heart to it. Think of uh, City Slickers, Back to the Day, which is another film where a group of people, they go on a trip, and there's a bit more going on, and there's a bit more with the characters going on. And while it's not Masterpiece Theater, it's not the plot stopping for ten minutes on dramatic scenes, it's very funny, it's very entertaining, but you still get a bit of that heart of Billy Crystal is lost in his life and he needs to find his smile. Bruno Kirby relating what happened with his his dad. And we get a little bit more insight to him. Daniel Stern, he's going to lose the store. He's going to get divorced. Gotta do a do-over. And that's why they're so adamant to get the herd where they need to go. And it's them bonding with each other and helping each other and saving each other. Um, they try to do a little bit of that with Travolta. He hides some information, but then he decides to s get some courage and bravery. But it, it just it, it fell a little bit flat compared to other films of that nature. So I think... That could have been done a bit better. But there are some moments that did make me chuckle. Like John Travolta when we see him. He's arguing over someone you think is an agent. Or something about price. Whether it be a car or a painting. But he walks outside. And it's, he's been arguing with a little kid about raking the leaves. Well go home Toby. You make me sick. I can't do all of this for $10. Well, you should have thought about that, but you put the flyer up that says $10 for a yard. <laughs> so I thought that was that was actually pretty funny, that uh, revelation. I thought Travolta played that scene fairly well, because I like John Travolta. A lot of people don't like John Travolta. No, I'm not into Scientology or, or all that, but I, I like Travolta. I haven't really heard bad things about him, like him treating people poorly. People, oh, maybe he's gay, maybe he's bi. Who gives a crap? Who gives a fuck? Like, I don't care. Is he flaunting it to get views or to get accolades or look how special I am? No. So leave him alone. Like, it seems like he's the guy that people just pick on for whatever damn reason. When he really hasn't done anything to deserve it. Like, what has he done to deserve that? He's a good actor. 
He's done films like The General's Daughter and even Scientology. He has, I mean, he did that crappy movie, Battlefield Earth, but I don't really remember him pushing it down people's throats. At least that I've noticed. But hey. Anyway. So yeah, I like Travolta. And sometimes the interaction with the four, I think there is some decent chemistry there. Where Travolta makes fun of this stuff. Tim Allen's wife made them. And then Tim was like, oh yeah, what has your wife ever made us? And then Martin Lawrence goes, hard. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Tim Allen, I like Tim Allen. It's nice to see him as the lead. Big fan of Home Improvement, one of my favorite sitcoms. Love Galaxy Quest. So it's always great to have him as the lead there. Just seems very personable, very affable guy. Um, I do like the bit where... He's tired of being told what to eat, so he eats, but he gets into the hospital. And he's talking to the wife. It's like, you're blaming me? And he goes, I'm in the hospital. It's a lot easier for, easier for me to blame other people for my problems. Like, the way Tim Allen delivered that, I thought that was kind of funny and seems like something <laughs> understandable for someone to say. I do like that the wife is supportive. She's not one no bitchy. She's like... Hey, maybe you should go on this thing. Oh, but I can't leave. But no, come on. You can do it. Go ahead. So, it's always nice to see a supportive wife in there and not just make them the, that's safe for Martin Lawrence's wife. And so the four of them go on this trip. Travolta's doing it just to get away from all the money problems, which by the way is never solved by the end of the movie. Like, by the end of the film, he's still bankrupt. He's still broke. So is he going to be homeless? Is he going to be living in a, a tin can? That's never resolved. Ever. I don't remember, like, Tim going, oh, you know, I'll help you out, or, like, none of that. So that's never resolved, which I thought was weird. Hey, maybe I missed something. If so, I apologize. That's my fault. But I was trying to pay attention, and... No, I see, like, by the end, he's still screwed. So, that's right. I think the writing of the film, the script, could have been a, a bit stronger, a bit better. And it's like, oh, well, they actually burnt their tent down, or they're riding on the road, and some get hit with buds. Travolta laughs, but he gets hit by a bird in the face. So, I, tell, I mean, I'm pausing because there's jokes like that that just, you know, trying to be very, like, cartoonishly slapstick that, I don't know, just felt more cringe than funny. So, like I said, not every piece of humor works in the film. But I still like the four guys. I still like to see them together. Uh, John C. McGinley comes in twice as his cop that you're supposed to tell that he's gay. Because he sees the four guys sleeping together and he in infers of who they are and how lucky they are. Later on the four find a, a little pond that they're swimming in and they decide, oh, let's be fully naked. Some little event with his family happens and then John C. McDinley comes upon them, goes in naked as well. Tries to say Marco Polo and they all leave him. Now I thought that character was going to come back later. Because the the rest of the plot is they go to a bar. Ray Liotta and his guys are real bikers. And they don't like, as they call it, these fakers. They kick them out. They, they take William H. Macy's bike. Travolta says that's BS. Let's go back. I'm going to get the bike back. He accidentally burnt, blows up their bar. And then Ray Leone and them are chasing these guys. Travolta lied to his friends. So they don't know they're in trouble. They come across a small town. They hang out in the small town. For this chilly festival. William H. Macy beats a woman. They fall in love. The other guys are just having fun at this festival. Some little separate hijinks ensue. Then Ray Leone and the bikers find them and... 
you get the finale. So yeah, I thought because you have these bad guys wanting to hurt our lead characters, okay, there's going to be a cop coming in. I mean, there's a sheriff, Stephen Tobolowski and his deputies, but they're not much of any help. In fact, they don't even carry guns because one of them shot the other's ear off. And there's a running joke of that where the guy makes fun of him, but, oh, he can't hear me. But I thought, oh, John C. Bedelli's going to come back later because he's a police officer, he's a cop, and uh, he may be feminine acting, but he's really a badass, and he kicks their ass and does stuff, and he's actually much, a big help. And Maybe the joke is he's not gay. He was just really being friendly, and he's got a wife and kids, and just he wanted to hang out with friends. And it was nothing sexual. Like maybe something like that. That could have been okay. That's actually kind of witty or kind of clever. But no. Like, John C. McDaley never comes back in the film. I didn't seem like there's something they were setting up. So I don't know. Maybe there was more footage that got deleted or something of that nature. I don't know. Ray Liotta. It was fun to see him in the movie. May he rest in peace. I almost forgot that he was in this as the bad guy. But I didn't wait to see him there see him interact with Tim Allen, these other guys. Uh, yeah, I, I, re I know some of his cohorts I recognize. I think one of them is the pilot in Con Air. I know the... I recognize the other guy. The guy who's like the weirdo talking about rape. I forget his name though. Because there's a bit where he's talking about some, putting something in someone's mouth. And then Ray Leo looks at him and goes, You don't put what in your mouth? <laughs> like the way Ray Leota says that with such confusion, sincerity in his face, that did make me laugh. So I say the, the film is fairly harmless. It's harmless, it's entertaining enough because of the, the lead actors. You know, yes, there's silly stuff. There's a bit where they go and slap a bull. And Travolta does it, it's fine. But now it's alert. Tim Allen does it. He gets chased. The others help him. And both Tim and Martin get hit. By the bull. Although, they don't really seem like they feel much after a fest after it. Like, even though they got hit by a ball, they seem to take it in stride. But again, there are moments that they made me chuckle. There's uh, when the bikers find them. It's okay, we gotta go back and tell them, but we can't do anything because Raylio wants them for himself. So don't do anything. Marn Lawrence, because he was lied to the Travolta, he, oh, these guys are nothing. He takes ketchup mustard and it starts spraying on them. And just the way Marlon's like, yee, come on, yeah, yee, ta -ta -ta -ta, wah, put your paws. The way he's doing it and the sounds he's making, I thought was pretty funny. I liked his energy in that scene. And then when they find out the truth, Tim Allen, the way he's yelling at Travolta, he screw up our lives, asshole. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's comedians trying to make a flimsy script work for what they're able to do. I did not all the jokes work. The plot is pretty flimsy, but it's no city slickers, it's none of that stuff, but uh, it, it was an entertaining enough time. Peter Fonda, Peter Fonda, not Fonda, Fonda comes in because you find out he was the original creator of Ray Liotta's Biker Dane, and after this fight entails, was pretty much our four leads getting their asses kit. <laughs> Which it just makes sense to you look at these biters. And Peter Fonda's like, four against, what, 50 guys? And they're the posers? And you find out that apparently Peter Fonda is Ray Liotta's dad. He says goodbye to them. Martin stands up to his wife. His kid, wow, that's really cool, Dad. Tim Allen's kid, respects him a bit. 
William HBC gets the girl. Now, I don't know what John Travolta does. I mean, he, I don't think he ever says what happens to his business. Or, like, instead of the end credits, they put in this bit where extreme makeover. Our four characters are watching a show, a stream makeover, and they a stream makeover built Ray Liotta and his bikers a bar again. I mean, number one, they don't really deserve it because they terrorize the whole town from time to time to time, and they beat the hell out of these four and stole stuff. They don't deserve a new bar. So, why do they get? It's like, yeah, if you're a piece of crap. Bar, you know, biker gang, and you terrorize a town from time to time, and went in and stole stuff and didn't pay for it, and you know, beat up innocent people. Well, if you decide to stop because your dad says so, you deserve a bar, sure. You deserve a new, brand new bar. What? Well, okay. It's superficial, but it's kind of a, it's a fun enough movie for me. I didn't have a bad time watching it again. I said it was great to see these four actors together. Jovolta have a bit of goofy fun. The few busy to see Tim Allen and Martin Lawrence play off each other. Wish we could have seen more of that. I said maybe with a stronger script. Maybe a stronger director. A little bit more heart and meat to the bones. And less of the, oh a bird hit John Jovolta on a bike. A little less of that type of humor. It really could have been sub something greater. As is, it's harmless fluff. And it was enjoyable enough. At least for me. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.